For the longest time, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class has sat at the very top of the four-door sedan hierarchy within the Benz family. However, as the world continues to move toward electrification, the S-Class must now share that space with this model. This is the 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS, part of their new EQ family, which is a family of electric vehicles. This all-electric range-topping sedan is basically the same size as the S-Class, and it's the first Mercedes EQ model to be built off of a dedicated EV platform. So I've already had a chance to drive this car for a couple of hours out in San Francisco last year. However, this week, Mercedes has loaned me the car for a full week, because remember, this vehicle was one of the most overwhelmingly technologically advanced vehicles that I ever drove, and to spend a whole week with it, I'll be able to put it through my usual battery of tests. We're going to do a 0-60 to test on it. We're going to do extensive range testing on it. We're going to live with that 56 inch hyper screen. At the end of this video, I'm going to find out has Mercedes managed to build the ultimate electric luxury sedan? Stay tuned to find out. So now that I have the EQS at my home area for a full week, I'm actually able to test this vehicle a little bit more thoroughly and live with it on a daily basis. Now I wanna first show you guys what's underneath the hood because Mercedes technically doesn't want you to open the hood. In fact, I found a little panel underneath the driver's side floorboard that pops off. It reveals the hood latch, which allows you to basically open up the hood, although you're not supposed to technically do that. And when you open up this hood, you're gonna notice quite a few things. First of all, there's not even a prop rod to hold this hood up. It doesn't have any struts either. And there's basically a large filter in here and electronics because this car has the uh, optional HEPA filtra filtration system, which is basically like a massive air filter that uh, basically filters the air that comes into the cabin. Now, as you can see, looking underneath the hood, that is the massive cabin air filtration system, which is why Mercedes doesn't want you to open up the hood. Sadly, it would be nice to see a frunk underneath here, but because I'm underneath here, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain. This vehicle has dual electric motors um, because this is the 580 model. It's got permanent magnet synchronous uh, electric motors fed by a 107.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. That battery pack obviously is a lithium ion battery pack. It is a Mercedes in-house designed battery pack. Uh, it all goes out through a one-speed reduction gear transmission, and we have a total of 516 horsepower and 631 pound-feet of torque to work with. This is the middle engine, or the middle powertrain in the EQS family. There's also an EQS 450 Plus, which I've briefly driven, and an EQS AMG, which has like an extra 150 horsepower over this model. Uh, almost 200 more horsepower if you guys have it on the overboost function with the race start. Now, um, Mercedes says that the range for this vehicle is around 340 miles. I've actually seen it around 380 in my real world testing. So again, very efficient, very long real world range. That's the most that I've actually seen out of all the vehicles, that, all the electric vehicles that I've tested. Uh, and uh, this vehicle should get to 60 in around 4.1 seconds. It'll DC fast charge at up to 200 kilowatts, which means this vehicle can go from 10 to 80% in roughly 30 minutes, which is impressive considering how big the battery pack is. Uh, and um, top speed is around 130 miles an hour. Now, if you guys require more speed, the AMG version will basically drop that 0 to 60 time to 3.4 seconds, and you'll also reach a top speed of 155 miles an hour. But overall, this is going to be quick enough for most people. Even the 450 Plus, which is a single motor rear wheel drive model, will still do it in around five and a half seconds. But let's go ahead and close the hood and take a look at the styling of this vehicle because the styling is definitely controversial for the EQS, uh, EQS model. This vehicle kind of has like a jelly bean shape. It almost looks like a bar of soap, a melted bar of soap. And it all looks like this for a reason. Mercedes says the madness behind the styling of this car, which again, has a very short or overhang, a very short hood because of aerodynamics. They wanted this thing to be the slipperiest vehicle in the industry. And they actually did claim that uh, for a short amount of time. I believe the Model S Plaid now is slightly slipperier, but I'm not entirely sure. There was a time where Tesla was uh, behind this car, but at 0 0.20 coefficient of drag, it is still among the slipperiest cars out there in terms of aerodynamics. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the front fascia of the EQS 580, because you can see it has no grill, obviously. It just has a kind of plastic area here with the uh, kind of like three-pointed star, or at least part of it in the actual grill with an interesting texture. You can see there's the Mercedes logo that's kind of proudly in the front and center there. And then you have the digital projection LED headlights. These are full LED headlights. These headlights actually have the ability to project symbols onto the road, which does look pretty cool. Um, that feature has become legal in the United States, although they're still kind of working around to make it finalized where it'll come with an over there update where it'll actually will project everything. At some point, you can see there's also a digital light bar, LED light bar that goes 
that connects the headlights together. It goes right above the grill. These are LED low and high beams, LED turn signals. No fog lights on this vehicle, but you can see there are some functional grill, grill openings over here. This right here is also functional, although some of the black areas there are not functional, but you can see it's got integrated parking sensors. And overall, this particular one that I'm showing you is painted in twilight blue. The blue actually looks okay in certain lights, but in the sunlight, it looks kind of like a grayish blue. There's also a darker, darker blue called nautical blue, I believe, um, that's also available. I'd probably go for the darker blue, but looking at the side profile, you can see, you can really see the aerodynamics of this vehicle. You can see it's got that really nice shape. It actually has kind of like a high roof. This vehicle is a little bit uh, narrower versus an S-Class, but it's about the same length at 207 inches long. It's riding on a 126.4 inch long wheelbase. So again, very large vehicle, but you won't be able to tell that from pictures until you're actually standing by the car, which will really show the sheer size of the vehicle. Now you can see these are the standard 21 inch wheels that you get on the 580. They're wrapped in a 265-40R21 inch tires. They also offer a 21 inch wheel with multiple spokes. This is kind of more of the aerodynamic design. You can see there's kind of an interesting ring on the inner portion of the actual wheel. These brakes are massive four pistons with 15 and a half inch rotors. If you guys go for the AMG model, you actually can upgrade the brakes to carbon ceramics with a six piston car, um, caliper on a 17 inch rotor, which is again, huge. Um, this vehicle itself, uh, you can see has four corner air suspension, which allows you to raise and lower the vehicle. And then over here on this little slot, this is actually how you fill up the washer fluid because you're technically not supposed to open the hood. This is where you dump the washer fluid in. So it's kind of an interesting design. A lot of people are probably gonna be wondering what that little slot is there for. And now you can tell them exactly uh, what it's for. Now, the cool thing about this car um, are some of the S-Class details. You can see uh, the EQS badge here, S is supposed to be showing that it's the top of the range. You also have the same pop-out style door handles that you get on other, uh, on the S from the S-Class model. You can see if you lock and unlock the door, the door handles will stay inside. But if you unlock the door, you can see the headlights or the door handles will pop out. These also light up at night, which again is a very cool feature similar to the S-Class. The roof panel, you can see uh, that panoramic glass roof is standard. This roof also opens, which is nice. You typically don't find that in electric vehicles where the sunroof opens, but you can see coming over to the rear, that jelly bean shape kind of continues. And it's one of the reasons why this vehicle is so aerodynamic. If this vehicle is too big, Mercedes just released the EQE, which is basically this car, but 10 inches shorter. The front looks slightly different. The rear looks practically the same. Uh, my tester has a rear color, a body colored rear spoiler here, which is nicely integrated. You can see there's EQS 580 Formatic badge, although Formatic is quite different versus the other Formatic gasoline powered Mercedes models because this is basically dual electric motors. And then if you're looking for the charge port, it's actually located over here on the uh, passenger side rear. You can see DC fast charging comes standard. This vehicle runs on the 400 volt architecture, which means it'll accept up to 400 kilowatts uh, or, or 200 kilowatts of DC fast charging, not quite as fast as the Porsche Taycan or the Audi e-tron or even the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6 and Genesis GV60. Basically, you can go from 10 to 80% in about 31 minutes, or you can also charge on a DC fast charger in around 10 hours. Remember, this has a massive 107 0.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Mercedes may offer a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack on the standard version at a later date. Uh, and it also will help drop the price of the car a little bit. Now, um, looking at the cargo area, you can see this is a sedan on the outside, but it's actually a hatchback. And because it's a hatchback, you get a ton of space in the trunk around 21, or I'm sorry, 22 cubic feet of space. You can see it's really nicely finished as well with all the carpet and the, uh, metal kick plate over here. There's also some really nifty underfloor storage over here, which again, you can put the mobile charger in there. You can hide some things. If you fold down those seats, it actually expands it out to 62 cubic feet of space. That's more than most compact SUVs. So again, even though this is a sedan, it's an immensely practical vehicle. And I love the fact that Mercedes made it an actual hatchback versus a traditional sedan. So moving on to the interior of the EQS 580, I want to first show you guys the key fob for this vehicle. You can see this is the newest key fob that I showed you on the new S-Class as well. It's a very heavy, sturdy key. It's a little bit on the larger side, but you can see it's got the usual buttons. You can also access this car through the Mercedes Me app, which I don't have access to because this is a press vehicle. But looking at the interior, you can see my tester has the AMG line sport package, which also includes the upgraded Napa leather, which has like a gray, brown, black two-tone finish to it along with that gray, light gray steering wheel. It's a very nice looking interior, especially with the brown and the two-tone and also has the upgraded uh, wood trim here, which 
looks and feels and smells real. It's a very nice looking cabin, especially when you're looking at it from a glance. This is a really, really impressive car. It's going to outmatch any Tesla, uh, although I haven't had a chance to spend some time in the updated Model S or the Lucid Air. That's something that I would probably also consider direct competition. You can see the seats, they adjust in like 18 different ways. These are heated, ventilated, and massaging. Um, the headrest even adjusts forward and back and up and down electrically, which is pretty nice. These seats look great, but surprisingly, the comfort isn't as good as the last S-Class that I drove. So make sure you try the seats out for yourself and see if they are comfortable for your specific body. You can see the door panel has this really beautiful leather stitched material. This is actually not leather, it's a synthetic leather. You can see you have more of the touch sensitive controls, three person memory seats. The Burmester premium sound system is also standard. That's the 3D sound system, it sounds incredible. And then you have more leather over here. Down in this area here, it is also softly, or a soft touch material, but I believe on some of the S-Class models, you can get it with full stitching on the lower part of the door panels which again shows you that the, e or the EQS's interior isn't quite as nice. Now stepping inside, you can see the step-in is pretty low, what you'd expect from a sedan. And you can see this model here comes with the 56.7 inch hyper screen, which really, really looks impressive. I'll be curious to see what it's like to live with on a daily basis. As I shut the door, one thing I'm gonna notice, the door has a solid thunk. However, I am noticing a couple things. First of all, there's a little bit of a creakiness from the door panel when I'm pulling on it and then this car doesn't have a soft closed door, which at this price point, it's a little bit unacceptable that there's no soft closed doors. And I know I'm kind of nitpicking there, but if you guys have driven or lived with an S-Class, you're gonna notice that right away. It's kind of a cost cutting emission that they shouldn't have done, especially considering this is supposed to be an S-Class uh, that's electric. Now, turning the vehicle on, the start stop button is actually right here in the center. And you can see when you turn the vehicle on, it has the you know typical Mercedes chime. It's got these beautifully impressive screens. It's actually comprised of three different screens. That's what the hyper screen is about. You have a 12.3 inch display here. Uh, you have a 17.7 inch display over here. And then you also have a 12 inch display over here on the passenger side. I'll have to get into the passenger seat to show you what that looks like uh, later on. But you can see this interior looks very impressive. It takes a second for it to start up when you first turn the vehicle on. You can see I'm waiting, I'm waiting and it's giving, it's telling me to wait for a second, but you can see once it, it loads up, this screen here is bigger than what you're gonna find in the Tesla Model S, and I believe the Lucid Air as well. It's a very impressive looking singular piece of, cur of uh, display. This is basically one big piece of glass that's comprised of three different displays. So again, that looks very impressive. What's even more impressive is when you go to the CarPlay. Go to the CarPlay, you can see it's not loading. It did this to me a couple times where it takes a second, so maybe it'll it'll load up later on. But you can see there's the GPS function, which is wonderful. It's a huge screen. You can see there's the other uh, apps that you can go to. If you wanna go turn on the heat, the massage, you can see the massage is right there in the comfort. You can go here to classic massage, turn that on. You can turn on the intensity on and off or low and upper and lower, uh, and it all works fairly well. The seat also has different adjustments for the kinetics, the lumbar, the side bolstering, the heating settings, the ambient lighting in this car is also gorgeous. You can see some of the ambient lighting, uh, even though we're in the middle of the daytime, it looks even more impressive at night where you have uh, lighting in the vents, you have lighting everywhere. And that's part of the whole theatrics of this interior is seeing the ambient lighting at night. So that was one of the nice privileges that I had living with this car for a full week. But Going over here, there's the CarPlay. Now it's finally loading up uh, and you can see it's huge. I love how Mercedes didn't actually, you know, make you have to deal with a smaller screen for CarPlay. It's pretty much almost the same size as the regular system. And it looks amazing when you have it like in GPS function here with that, it just looks really impressive. It's really easy to see the icons. For those of you who can't see very well, you need, you know, to blow up your, you know, your phone screen. This is going to be really, really nice. And you're gonna love that. Now looking over here, at the rest of this, the interface, you can see climate is always gonna be down here, which I like how it stays fixed. Push the climate menu over here. You can adjust the second and the first row seats for how you want the climate. You can see air quality. This vehicle does have the HEPA air, air filtration system, which it tells you the air quality on the outside and on the inside, it tells you what it's filtering out. What this one in here is missing, however, is the fragrance system. I don't know why this one doesn't have that. Usually you'd have an option here to turn on the cabin fragrance which I've tried in the S-Class, but this one here doesn't have it. It's supposed to have it. I'm not entirely sure why it's lacking that feature because my tester is a fully loaded version, but it may be because just of the chip shortage. Now, um, looking over here on this screen, you can see you can show things like your option, like information, like the energy flow, vehicle information here. Uh, it shows how much throttle and brake you're giving it. 
Um, going back to the home display here, there's also an EQ function that shows you how much battery percentage you have. You can adjust the charging, you can open and close the charging socket flap. You can see there's your range. It shows you what's sucking up the range and it shows you your consumption. Um, so this is all really cool stuff. Um, the AMG version adds another AMG track pace option, I believe, um, that I've, I briefly sampled. I'm hoping to get my hands on one for a week to test later on. But you can see this is all fairly easy to use, but it does require a little bit more layers if you guys are trying to access some things. For example, if I want to skip the skip this song or skip this track, I have to actually click it on the screen. There's no skip button here on the steering wheel. Instead, there are a bunch of touch sensitive buttons where you can control this screen here, you can control that screen over there. So it all looks fairly nice. You have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. You have paddles on the wheel, which controls the regen braking between normal recuperation. Um, there's also a strong recuperation and then there's also no recuperation. So we'll talk about that later in the driving scene. There's also an intelligent recuperation which um, can adjust the, the regen braking based on your driving environment and whatnot. So that's all really easy to use. This display here is also pretty customizable. You can see there's an understated, there's a sport display, a classic. You can also put GPS, driver assistance. Um, this all looks fairly nice. My tester also has the heads up display, but it's not the augmented reality heads up display um, that would interlay G uh, directions and arrows onto the actual windshield, which makes it look really cool and futuristic. Love the wood grain over here, along with the leather stitching on the upper part of the dash, although this is not real leather, it's a synthetic leather. This is also a faux stitching over here. It's not actually real stitching, which is kind of disappointing in a car that's supposed to be an S-Class, but you can see, open this up. Two USB-C charging ports, there's a wireless phone charging pad, two cup holders over here, which um, you can adjust and you can kind of, you can put them away if you wanna turn this into a big storage bin, which is nice. There's a fingerprint reader over here, which will load up your different driver profiles when you have it set. You have your drive, driver selector mode over here, we can see there's an eco, comfort, sport, and then an individual mode, which the car itself has so many different ways that you can custom tailor it. And you can also adjust the noises that it makes, which I'll, I'll show you guys later on in the driving scene. You can see over here, going into the settings, going into driving, going into vehicle over here. There's a sound experience. There's silver ways and vivid flux. I actually really like the vivid flux sound effects that it makes. Really, really Star trek -y and futuristic. Open this up, you can see pretty decent sized center console. Two more USB-C charging ports in there. More of that faux leather with the padded area here where it's nice and um, leather stitched. Uh, over here on the glove compartment, you can see there's a button you can push that will open up this glove compartment. It's a pretty big, deep glove compartment with a, uh, it's got uh, damped, it's lined with felt. It offers pretty good amount of storage. Your hazard switch is over here. Um, this panel right here you can see is your volume control. You have to push that button down. No actual volume knob, which would be nice if they included a volume knob. There's also a mute button over here. Uh, above me, you can see big panoramic glass roof. This roof does open. It has a power retractable shade, so you can shield out the light if you guys don't want that. You can also open this up completely over the front seats, which is definitely nice. You have to kind of swipe over there, which again, the swipe control is kind of a nice gimmick, but it's a little bit finicky to use at times, but you can see once I open it up, it lets in a ton of light, which is one of the only reasons why you buy this car. Most EVs don't allow you to open this. However, this doesn't open up any larger than that. So I was kind of disappointed. I wanted it to open up a little bit larger. But overall, um, the seats are pretty comfortable, but they're not as quite as comfortable as the last S-Class. The massage works well. The stereo sounds good. There is a fairly good amount of space in here. However, if you're noticing one thing, the dash is very high, which does uh, ruin the visibility a little bit. I found that looking over this on the driver's side can be a little bit annoying. You also have this really large pillar here. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if you guys are used to the better visibility of the S-Class. Now I've magically moved over to the passenger side here. And because I'm sitting here, it now allows me to turn this screen on. From the driver's side, you can't do that. But once you're sitting here, you can basically push this little or tap this little area here. You can see once you turn this screen on, it, it basically mimics the screen over here, but it's a little bit smaller. So uh, it's 12.3 inches as well. If you go to the home display here, you can literally see all your usual sources here, which is nice. You can even put the GPS on this side of the screen along with the GPS on this side of the screen. So you can kind of have two different GPS functions. And you can also put it over there, which is kind of cool. Um, what you can't do, however, is you can't put the CarPlay over here, which would have been nice as well. The CarPlay is going to stay over here on the center screen. But what this screen is really nifty for is for basically sending the GPS over to this screen for the tra for the driver. You can also control the phone uh, information over here, which is kind of nice. Um, you can also turn on the driver's seat and passenger seat massage from over here. So it's kind of nice to have a passenger over here when you're driving and they can kind of do all those secondary controls for you. You can even go into the settings here. You can adjust some of the settings for this screen here, the brightness and whatnot. So this is all really easy to use along with the 
passenger side here, you also get three-person memory. You have heated and cooled seats along with the massage function. Uh, and it pretty much is a really nice place to spend time. And that's partly the reason why you want the hyper screen is if you expect to have a passenger here all the time and it basically gives you control of this screen over here and you can kind of help out the driver whenever they're doing most of the driving obviously looking at the back seat of the eqs the one thing the mercedes hasn't disclosed however is the rear legroom figures i actually couldn't find that when i was looking on their media site but you can see here, this looks like around 39, 40 inches of legroom. It should be a little bit less, within a couple inches less versus the S-Class, but it's, you can see it's still a very really nice place to spend time. You still have beautiful materials back here with that synthetic leather, um, more of that beautiful wood, the metal speaker covers. You also have heated and ventilated seats back here, which is standard on the 580 model. My tester is missing a rear seat upgrade package for like $1,700, which would also include massaging rear seats. But getting back here, you can see this does require you to duck your head a little bit because of the sloping roof line for aerodynamics. Getting back here and shutting the door, you can hear the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Again, still no soft close feature that would have been nice to have a soft close feature but you can see love the kind of rose gold copper accents that you find throughout the cabin here the floor here is not completely flat but it does make for getting three people across here not bad you also have quad zone climate control over here which is nice more rear seat air vents along with vents over here um, this center console area you can see when you have it up it just looks like any other seat but if you want to fold it down it basically gives you a wireless phone charging pad a little bit of storage over here uh, and then you know, if you open this up, you can see there are two USB-C charging ports. So there's a total of six USB charging ports in this vehicle. You have two stored storage pockets over here, which is nice. Big uh, panoramic glass roof. This portion here doesn't open, but I do like the pillow back here. Once you're sitting back here, you can see the pillow is pretty nice to have. But the seats, again, they don't feel quite as plush as the last S-Class that I sat in. So that's something to keep in mind. But overall, this is not a bad place to spend time. Just be sure that you're okay with having a little bit less legroom versus the S-Class. So here we are finally back in the 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580. Now I'm starting out this driving scene with a full charge and it was showing 380 miles with a full charge, which is the most that I've ever seen. It's about 40 miles higher versus Mercedes's claim or the EPA's claim. And that number is very real. In my week's worth of testing, I put like 400 miles on this car and it has consistently done over 350, between 350 to 370 miles of full of range on a full charge, which is pretty impressive considering uh, this car is how big it is, how heavy it is and how quick it is. Now, speaking of quick, Mercedes says this car should get to 60 in around 4.1 seconds. So now that we've got the vehicle here with our testing equipment, uh, it's about 77 degrees outside. Let's see what this car can do. <laughs> seconds. 3.68 is really quick and typical Germans, they are conservative in their estimates. I cannot wait to get a hold of the AMG model to see what that can do because 3.78 pretty much matches the Mach-E GT that's uh, in my garage that uh, we own for, uh, which Ford says three and a half for that. This is fast and it, this car always feels constantly faster than the numbers would suggest. And that's kind of the beauty about an electric car is it always feels very quick. Uh, and it doesn't feel like it kind of gives up any power even at highway speeds and that's kind of the beauty of a vehicle like this or any type of electric vehicle is it just has instantaneous torque now let's go ahead and see what we can get here on this strip floor there's no launch control just put your foot down 3.83 <laughs> and this is with it going slightly uphill uh, versus more level back there so god this thing is fast the amg model should be able to do it in the low three second range i would estimate it's about a second faster almost a second faster but this car will put a huge smile on your face it's just uncanny to me how quick a vehicle this big and this heavy can accelerate from zero to 60 and it's just unreal now its top speed is around uh, 130 miles an hour and let me tell you guys on the highway this thing cruises like you'd expect a German luxury car to. You don't feel the sense of speed. It wants to keep pulling and keep pulling. And I suspect it'll probably reach, you know, way past 130 miles an hour without the limiter that's on it. But anytime you <laughs> put your foot down here, I love the sound. This is the vivid flux sound. And the sound is really interesting. It's very futuristic. It's very Star Wars-y. Uh, and it's a really cool sound. It just kind of adds to the drama of this thing. It just has instantaneous thrust every time you put your foot down and so smooth. The ride quality in this car is very smooth. It's very quiet on the inside. There's no gears to deal with. So 
You can basically just do this and just piss off your passenger anytime you want. So yes, as an EV, this car excels. It feels faster than its numbers would suggest. It's so smooth, it's so quiet. I'm sitting here getting a massage. The one thing where this car I believe is a huge miss, and this is on Mercedes, is the regenerative braking. Every time I have it in strong recuperation, you can adjust it from normal to no recuperation. There's also an intelligent mode. The brake pedal will move to match where the system believes that the brake would be if you were using the friction brakes. And it's definitely strange. It takes some getting used to, but what I don't like about it is, <laughs> is it makes it difficult to brake smoothly with this car when you have the brake pedal, you know, pushing itself down when it's in regen, like right now, and then I go and I reach for it. First of all, you have to remind yourself the brake pedal is not where you expect it to be. And then when you need to push on the actual brakes, it takes a second for it to engage the friction brakes. It's a very odd feeling, and I found that the passengers will be jerking their heads around because it's difficult to stop this vehicle smoothly. I also had to do a couple of emergency stops, and it was, again, really, really odd. The ABS would kick in very, very abruptly, and it just it was difficult to be smooth. So I'm just not entirely sure that's a good option. I think Mercedes needs to rethink the whole brake pedal that matches where it thinks it's gonna be from the regen braking and just make it more conventional in that in that sense. Um, but other than that, what I love about this car again is the four wheel steering. Every time I turn the wheel, you can feel that back end turn the opposite direction at lower speeds and it really makes, it actually makes the back end kind of fling around and it makes this car have the same turning radius as a Mercedes-Benz A-Class, which is kind of like a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla. It's really, really strange to be driving a vehicle that's this long that turns on a dime. I actually look for reasons to go for, to, to, to make a U-turn in this car because it's just so cool. But the other benefit is at higher speeds, the wheels will turn in the same direction as the front wheels and it really makes the, uh, stability even better. It makes this car feel so sporty, surprisingly, even though we've got this soft and floaty ride, which isn't too floaty for me. Some people have complained that it's too floaty, but you know what? I think it's actually a really great ride quality, um, but this vehicle turns on a dime. It handles really well. It feels very stable, um, but you do feel the weight. You constantly feel the 6,000 pounds that you're pushing around, but at least it's low, it's low down in the chassis because of that big battery pack that lines the floor. Uh, the regen braking in this car uh, also does provide near one pedal driving experience. The automatic intelligent braking is interesting because right now I have it an intelligent. It doesn't actually brake the car until it sees a car in front of you. Then it actually will do the strong regen braking. So that's something that's kind of interesting. Getting, it takes some getting used to. The steering in this car doesn't really provide much feedback, but it's quick and responsive. The seats are also very comfortable. Visibility in this vehicle could be better. I don't like this really tall dash here that just kind of makes it feel like you're you're trying to see through like a mail slot. You also have this very big A pillar here. The view out of the back is good, and this car is just so quiet. The tech can be overwhelming to live with, but once you kind of get used to it, I found that it does work fairly well. The voice commands also work well. Um, the zero layer thing here on the screen where it kind of puts the um, icons that you constantly use in the lower portion of the screen, it also works okay, but it's still not the best. I still also would prefer a traditional volume knob and a tuning knob and a couple of shortcut buttons as opposed to all these touch sensitive buttons. And I really want that there to be a skip a skip button on the steering wheel when I want to change the music. Uh, I think that's annoying how I have to go into the touch screen here. It requires you to take your eyes off the road. But other than that, you know, the real world range of over 350 miles, the quiet cabin, the luxurious ride quality, the comfortable seats, the instantaneous thrust, this thing is incredible to drive as a daily. And it does make me feel like I'm piloting an electric S-Class, aside from the fact that it is missing a couple of upscale features, you know, it's like the soft closing doors, the air fragrance system, uh, the rear, rear sun shades. This cabin does get very bright in here. You can close obviously the sunroof, but uh, it would be nice if there were some uh, manual sunshades for the back windows to kind of help you know block out a lot of that light. But overall, very impressed with this car. It is among the quickest EVs that I've ever tested uh, and way quicker than its numbers would suggest, at least quicker feeling. And the real world range is also super impressive. So as their first vehicle that's a dedicated EV platform, this car is impressive, but I am looking forward to getting my hands on the AMG model for an extended period of time because I wanna see just how much quicker that vehicle is. 
So after spending a full week with the flagship Mercedes-Benz EQS 580, I am simply blown away with the amount of technology that Mercedes has thrown into this vehicle. Remember, it's the flagship of the Mercedes EQ family, so I wouldn't expect anything less of all the tech. The 56-inch hyperscreen in this vehicle is immensely impressive. I mean, it, it, it does take a little bit of a learning curve, but after spending a week with it, I was able to figure out most of it. I do think that Mercedes has a little bit of work to do with the software of it. I still think it has too many layers to kind of go into to the system to make a few adjustments. It does have that zero, zero layer capability, but I found that it still was a little bit finicky at times. It also was a little bit slow at startup when I first turned the screen on. It would take a second for it to load up. Thankfully, the wireless Apple CarPlay pretty much worked flawlessly. The passenger side screen was actually a useful thing whenever you were sitting on the passenger side where you didn't have to reach over to the center screen, which can actually be a far reach because of how vast it is. Uh, and I also think that some of the touch sensitive controls, they should give back a knob. There should be a volume knob in the actual controls for the center display. Uh, and the touch controls on the steering wheel are a little bit fin finicky. There should also be a skip button on the steering wheel when I want to change music tracks. I shouldn't have to kind of use the little touch pad and then scroll over. It's just a little bit too much extra steps uh, for something that should be a little bit simpler. The interior itself does have a couple of cost cutting uh, cut or corner cutting compared to an S-Class. I'm surprised this vehicle doesn't have soft closed doors. It doesn't have any power retractable sunshades for the rear windows or for the back windows, which is slightly annoying. And this model here is missing the air purifier the air cap, the fragrance system that you get on some of the other trims and you also get on an S-Class. I'm not entirely sure why this is missing at, especially since this model here is a fully loaded version, but there are certain aspects of the interior that do feel like it's not quite up to the S-Class snuff, especially when you're looking at the back seat and you're looking at the seat comfort. But other than that, the technology in this car is immense. The uh, electric capabilities of this car, nearly 400 miles of real world range was very impressive and zero to 60 is also right where Mercedes says, slightly under four seconds is also very impressive impressive but really if you're guy if you guys are looking at this vehicle here and you're also comparing it to an s-class this is where the EQS may come up a little bit short because for those of you who are used to the technology and luxury of an S-Class, this certainly matches the technology of the S-Class, but it doesn't quite match the luxury. And that could be a deal breaker for some. So just keep in mind the Mercedes had to cut a little bit of corners here to make this car as technologically advanced as it is. And it also, uh, at over 5,800 pounds, is about 1,000 pounds heavier than the S-Class. And you're gonna feel that weight when you're driving this vehicle around, but it does have a really great ride quality. It does have really great quietness and great comfort. And of course, it's gonna come at a very expensive price tag because this car starts at around $103,000 for the 450 plus. At around 20 grand if you guys want the 580 with the dual motor all-wheel drive. When you kind of compare the two on terms of equipment, it's really only about a $10,000 increase. My tester here is a little over $133,000 with everything which is again, a lot of money, but keep in mind that an S-Class comparably equipped can actually be around $10,000 more versus this car. So it's very, it's a very interesting proposition. And if you're okay with some of the cheaper materials, but going with the all electric uh, range and getting a design that's not quite as stately as the S-Class, this is certainly worth a look. I'm just not entirely sure I would compare this car or I would consider this car over something like a Tesla Model S because the Tesla gives you similar range even better performance. And I also haven't had a chance to drive the new model yet with its new interior. Tesla made some improvements there. But other than that, it's a very impressive entry and I am very much looking forward to seeing what Mercedes has planned for the rest of the EQ family. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS 580. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Yo.